Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution, our sandbox series where we're over in Isla Nublar uh, making the uh, the best looking park we can make using uh, what we have in the game that we've unlocked in the career series. So these are two series running side by side, that's why you might get a little bit muddled up with the numbers. Uh, just check out the thumbnails, you'll see the difference. This one is um, just Isla Nublar, unlimited money, and we're going to be coming in here every few days and adding in the stuff we've unlocked from the career mode if you enjoy this video please let me know by clicking the like button and uh, if you're not already and you're new here and you'd like to see lots more creative gaming for grown-ups don't forget to click subscribe um quickly before we talk about what we're doing here because i'm basically just leveling out some land I get a lot of comments asking about uh, the term creative gaming for grown-ups uh, that I use on my videos. I've, I've said it for years now. Um, it's always been at the top of the YouTube page as well, creative gaming for grown-ups. And I get a lot of people say, well, I'm 12 and I watch, or I'm 14 and I watch. And, and that's great. I never say that it's... Uh, videos for adults it's for grown-ups and you can be a very much you can be a grown-up 12 year old uh, or you can be a grown-up 14 year old and you can uh, just the same way you can be a very childish 27 year old okay so it isn't necessarily your actual age it's more the fact that you appreciate a bit more time spent on the videos a little bit more of a maybe like a chilled out vibe on the videos and uh, a bit more sort of like a creative side and actually looking at the game properly uh, what I what we don't do here is crazy videos where I scream at the camera and uh, just release all the dinos for instance in Jurassic World or whatever um, I'm more about finding the, uh, the you know the creative outlets in video games and and, and that's what I mean by creative gaming for grown-ups I don't mean your actual age I mean more about your mindset and the fact that you appreciate um, you know the, the sort of slightly more subdued and uh, and detailed play style so that, that, that's what I mean there I'll have to mention that a few times because it, it keeps popping up in comments now so Anyway, let's talk about what we're building. I've got a large lake here, and we have the Innovation Center unlocked from Island Number 1, uh, so I'm going to place that in as well. Uh, I've seen on the subreddit for this set, uh, there's some really great um, people doing similar to this, sort of creating a, a sort of uh, really high-detailed high, high uh, detailed, um, park here on Isla Nublar, and some of them actually sort of trying to copy the uh, the actual Jurassic World park. Uh, now, I haven't seen Jurassic World or the new one. I'm going to try and catch them soon, to be honest, because I feel like I should watch them really playing this game. Um, so this isn't uh, meant to be a, a recreation of, of Jurassic World itself, um, but Jurassic World does have this, uh, well, a much larger lake, actually, um, in front of the Innovation Center. I think in the film, actually, this lake uh, has dinos in it. Or, or, well, not dinosaurs. What are they called when they're in the water? Is it plesosaurs or something like that? Uh, anyway, swimming reptiles uh, that come out and do shows and stuff. So, you know, I'm still hoping for maybe a DLC in the future where we where we unlock uh, water creatures. And um, so, But here, we've just kind of gone for a bit of a lake as a centerpiece for the park. And then, obviously, we have this Innovation Center. You get three centers, one for each of the... Um, uh, the, the, the the, what they call the the sections in the in the game uh, the groups you know there's so there's entertainment science and uh, security uh, this is the entertainment one uh, there's also a science center and a security center they both basically do a similar job they're basically a ploppable uh, item that just generates cash that, that's literally what they do depending on how good your rep is with each of the factions uh, factions that's the word I can think of whatever you do uh, depending on the rep it is with that in, in faction will it will make more money uh, here we're, we're literally just using it as a as a nice weenie basically the sort of thing you would find in a park uh, so now that's we're now working on a few more smaller pens. I, uh, I really um, love the fact that you guys are getting behind this idea of, uh, of a traditional zoo that usually has a few um, small, I don't want to say rubbish animals, but smaller animals, uh, you know, easier to care for, just kind of a bit more chilled out, usually herbivores. Um, like I say, things like um, smaller monkeys, um, some sort of hooved animals, you know, caribou, uh, you know, moose, that kind of thing. Just They just sort of come on and chill out, and that's the kind of thing we have towards the start of the park and then as you get further back you get some more the more crazier animals that's exactly what we're going to do here so here we've got um, a few pens very much open no viewing galleries or anything just kind of keeping them open for people to wander around and uh, and also you'll see here that I'm trying my hardest to kind of do some varying uh, you know sort of cool things with paths because um, I, again we don't have that much decoration in the game so but, but the pathing tool is pretty good and it's one way we can actually kind of um, you know stretch our creative muscles a little bit so you'll see that I try and do a few different ideas with paths and almost kind of make uh, viewing galleries 
uh, that aren't really viewing galleries, you know. So we've got um, we've got the viewing galleries in the game. They're quite big structures that people can actually come into in the game, and they come, uh, you know, and actually see the dinos. But on these smaller pens, um, they don't really look very good. They're, they're a bit too big. So instead, I'm going to make these sort of. Uh, pretend ones using uh, some paths so you'll see we've done that there and we do it on the other side of this as well this one actually stays empty um i have some, some more smaller dinos to unlock things like um uh Gally, Mimus, i think he's one of them which is a smaller one a little bit like the struths that we've got so um once i unlock a few more of those smaller ones we'll come in and place them in there but the pens are just getting there at the moment just to kind of uh, space the um you know to, to have the space sort of locked off for them and then here we do our, slightly fir uh, our first slightly bigger uh, pen. Uh, and this is going to be home to a couple of Triceratops, my favourite dinosaurs. So um, eventually, towards the rear of the park, or maybe down to one side, we're going to have a large uh, herbivore paddock. Uh, a really large one, in fact, that you can use the, uh, uh, the gyro spheres around. Again, it's something we've got to unlock in the single player. Uh, but treat it more like a safari uh, so we're going to have that but uh, but in the meantime uh, on the way up to there we are going to have some uh, some slightly larger herbivore pens that will hold some of the uh, the larger ones so here we've got uh, a couple of trikes that sort of mid-level uh, size of it. i'm trying to get a tree in there but unfortunately the um it's a little bit uh little bit it could be a little bit more lenient as how close you can get trees to the paths i think but at the moment yeah we can't do anything much there so um here i'm leasing a couple of uh dracorics which are going to go in that uh, other paddock that we've opened up and uh, just two of them they're pretty happy there on their own they could maybe do with three i think i've actually i do put three in there eventually um but one thing i did really realize is that you don't actually need that much space for them to still be happy I, on that first island i, I built I was doing pretty big pens really for them and actually they're, they're quite content with their very small space and i think when you zoom out and look at how big they are here you can actually see that that's a pretty decent size enclosure um you know for them and, and like i say all, all their stats are, are more than happy so, uh, so yeah, so those mid-size level, those sort of Triceratops and um, uh, Edmontosaurus is that kind of thing, those sort of mid-size level. And then obviously when we get to the big herbivore safari, uh, we'll have all our sort of Brachiosaurs and uh, Diplodocus, you know, and things like, you know, the real big monster, sort of big herbivore guys. Um, we'll have those more of a sort of free roaming area, probably there to the left of the, um, of the innovation center, I guess. But... Uh, yeah, really enjoying kind of figuring out how to place these areas down, and uh, you know, doing some some different ideas with the with the cages, and and and, and trying to uh, rather than just putting down boxes, you know, there you can see we sort of tied them around to the paths, and try to get some varying shapes with them and make them look a little bit more interesting. Here, I place down a restaurant. Uh, we still have quite a few main street buildings to unlock. There's a bowling alley. There's an arcade. I think there's. Um, Maybe another another gift shop. Uh, I, I know there's a few others. I, I, I'm having a little bit of trouble sorting the path out there, but I think I give up in the end. Um, but yeah, so we're going to open up a few more of them, have them sort of left and right, sort of coming away from the innovation centre. Um, yeah, having a having a definitely having a bit of trouble with the path here. I need to go back and and. and tidy up this and, and finish it off uh, the warning labels there mostly just telling me that these buildings up here aren't um aren't powered so we'll sort that out at the moment we only have the small uh, power station unlocked so again eventually we'll go back and, and replace uh, uh make our power grid a little bit more sort of robust once we unlock the medium and large power stations in the career mode which will uh, will return um tomorrow no no tomorrow's live stream so we'll live stream tomorrow and then thursday we'll carry on with our career mode and we'll hopefully get uh islam uh Muerta finished so here i'm, I'm placing the pylons they're, they're a bit uh big and ugly the pylons in the game to be honest with you but um so rather than trying to hide them i go with this idea of making it a feature almost around the path of the um of the of the lake I, I end up going back and changing that um i'm just trying to find my power lot here yeah so we can put throwing some upgrades to get a little bit of extra juice out of it um somebody pointed out that in the sandbox mode there are some sandbox specific options so you can turn off uh, uh dinos getting ill you can turn off dinos escaping you can turn off uh, a few other features as well uh well storms and things like that uh, so I've done all that, obviously, because you know we're not playing this level for the for the management uh, challenge. We're playing this level just to make it look nice. We, you know, we want it to be as sandboxy as most. Uh, the one sandbox feature I'd really like them to add is the um, is to stop dinos aging, uh, because uh, they still age, unfortunately. So while I'm building this, uh, all those dinos that we've got are, are aging, and it is going to get to a point where we have to sort of go around and replace pretty much all of them. So uh, yeah, I'd like to see a, a, an aging 
uh, feature turned off just for the sandbox, uh, just so that you know the dinos can sit there and live in, in sort of perpetuity uh, and enjoy themselves. Here we're moving across a third uh, Dracorex, and I think this is when I start working on the trikes. Uh, there we go, that uh, <laughs> helicopter having a bit of trouble getting in then by the looks of things. There we go, we have a look at these larger things and decide what to do and we end up on... Uh, do we do trikes or do we do... Yeah, we do, I think, I was, I was looking at the other one which is the um, the unlocked one for having the, the uh, deluxe version of the game. Strike, strike, strike Teratops or something like that, and Strikosaurus, there we go, or something, I'm not sure, I can't see, the, the video is moving too fast, uh, but we'll probably save those for the um, for the herbivore uh, safari later on, I think. So here we've just got a couple of regular strikes, unfortunately, every now and again, you just kind of have to sit and wait in this game, it is a little bit of a sitting and waiting game, it's not so bad in the career mode because there's other things to do, you know, there's food to, to fill and there's, um, you know, sabotage is happening if you're not keeping your factions happy and all that sort of stuff, but here... Uh, you know, you want some dinos, you just kind of have to sit and wait for the dinos. So there we go. We've got a couple of uh, Triceratops ready to go there. I'm very likely looking at another screen. There we go. <laughs> I've caught up with myself. Um, most likely just sort of looking at something else there. Two or three trikes seem to be the uh, the magic number. So uh, we've gone for two here. And uh, I might well go and stick a third in. Maybe if we unlock another um, skin. Because here we've got two different skins. I think one's the arid skin and one's the base skin. Uh, so maybe a third scheme would, could, would go quite well there, just to kind of just to give them a bit of um, a bit of personality and a bit of sort of separation, so they don't all look the same. Um, and then while they're on the way over, we're going to make the uh, the place look nice for them. So I'm trying to keep in the um, the, the, the fences to some sort of uh, rules here. So at the moment we're using light fencing for the pens and then heavy fencing for uh, sort of keeping the guests out area. Now I know that doesn't really fit uh, with you know one being heavy and one being light, but the heavy fencing looks a lot more um, I don't know really ut ut utilitarian. I guess it's, you know sort of uh, it looks a lot more suitable to be uh, used as as keeping air guests out of areas. I mean. Um, and also the light ones, you know, are a bit more open, so you can really see what's going on a bit more. So there we go, a couple of Triceratopses, uh, Triceratopsi? Triceratopses, no, I guess. And then I'm just going back and renaming. Uh, we'd done this in the first episode, but then I had to get rid of it and move it so that we could get some trees behind it. One thing I really want to try and do, and you'll see every now and again, I go down to uh, ground level and have a look around, and that is uh, to keep the sort of backstage areas away from... Uh, the front stage areas. Now, uh, the guests in the game do go in and check out the backstage areas, which is fine. You know, as a zoo, I guess, you know, it is a little bit more focused on sort of conservation and things like that. So I have no problem with guests sort of checking out the science buildings because, uh, you know, you could, you, to sort of explain it, uh, you could say that they're on like a VIP tour or, you know, a lot of, a lot of zoos there do tours where you can go backstage, maybe feeding a couple of animals and things like that. Uh, and here we're building the science building. And what I'm doing here is basically a science area. So um, we've got the storm building there. There aren't going to be storms in the game. Um, but but it just it's a nice looking building and here I just wanted to kind of uh, play around with the idea of having like a science park that the uh, the scientists could head over and uh, and also guests who are intrigued as to how this system is put into place they could come over and check things out trying to do it also trying to do a little bit of terrain work here as well but the, the buildings just do not play well with uh, with terrain that's on a slope so um, I get to work in the end but I think eventually this might need another little re go at it to to kind of really really um, make the most of the space. Here I'm taking the um, uh, the power lines away from that path because I, yeah, I just I didn't really like how it looked in the end. Uh, so what we'll probably end up doing is having the power go all around the park and then coming in to substations where it's needed I think is probably the best idea. We're going to have the monorail run through this area and uh, again, like I said in the first episode, I can imagine the uh, the monorail having a bit of a voiceover saying something like, we're now over, going over the, the, you know, the Hammond Science Park where all the magic happens, you know, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of the times in Disney, when you're on the uh, the transport systems, you'll end up driving past a few, uh, you know, old, uh, old uh, you know, buildings that were used to, to actually draw films and stuff i don't think there's much done there now actually at the walt disney parks but a lot of the time you would might you go back buildings or or maybe you know walt disney's holiday home or whatever you know and it'll tell you things like that so i kind of like the idea of, of that sort of um glimpse at the backstage if you want it basically here the monorail was just a little bit too close to the uh, to the pylon coming out of the uh of the power supply unit we've put in there so um just trying to move everything around a little bit so I can get the monorail at a bit of an angle. 
And uh, again, you know, the, you can see there the terrain's a little bit funky on the path. I, I don't mind how it's turned out, but I do feel like maybe having another go at that to make it a little bit more sensible would uh, would make sense. And, uh, and that's pretty much what we do. So we've added a few new dinos. We've added our innovation center. We've added a bit of a science park. The next episode will uh, probably work on some hotels, I think. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you can give us a like. It really does help out the channel. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries, or suggestions, you can pop them down in the comments. And if you fancy chatting, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Sparrow. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.